Hello. Happy Monday, everybody. Hope you had a great Easter weekend, although I know it looked very different for a lot of people. Definitely did for us. Um, but we still made the most of it, had some nice weather and uh, enjoyed a massive turkey dinner, just us. So we have leftovers probably for the next month, but, um, but that's okay. So hope you guys had a good one and would love um, for you to say hello and let me know you're here and joining live. Like I said, I don't always know that you're here unless you say hello. Um, and it's always nice to know people are watching. Comment along the way, ask questions, of course. Um, this is our third little series where I'm trying to go live once a week on a different topic. And ideally it's a topic that you guys have suggested along the way. So this one, we're gonna to talk today about DIYs because this tends to be a question I get all the time. Um, when, especially when people are getting started with uh, their oils. And it's something, yeah, like I said, I get questions all the time. So I thought what I'd do is I'd make a list of my top 10. And this was hard for me to do um, because there are a lot of DIYs that we have used over the years, but these are my ones that I tend to go to the most. Um, however, there's almost, when it comes to DIYing with your essential oils, there is almost no end to what you can do. It just depends how much you want to get into it. Hey, Robin. Hey, Heather. Glad you guys could join. Um, so yeah, there really is no end to what you can do as far as DIYs. It just depends how, how deep you want to go into it. So I have tried DIYing almost, I mean, not everything, but a majority of things. And some I've decided it's just way easier to find a great company and a great product and support them instead of trying to make my own. And for others, I am diehard. I will make the, you know, this product until the end of time because it just makes so much sense. So Robin and Heather, comment below what some of your favorite DIYs are. I'd love to hear from you. Um, a lot of these you will have heard from me before because this is, I've talked about them many, many times. Just an FYI for anyone that's new, you can go into our Facebook group under the search section and you can search uh, DIYs, you can search, you know, foaming hand soap DIY, laundry detergent DIY. It's all going to pop up because I've posted about this for years now. Um, also a great resource is the doTERRA blog, um, or you can simply Google doTERRA DIYs, um, doTERRA DIY, and then, you know, cleaning supplies, beauty products. I mean, there is no end to it. Yeah, the hand soap is amazing, isn't it, Heather? It's my number one. So it's the first thing I have on my list. Really just very, very high level. I want to share the why I find um, doing DIYs is important and it's not actually because I love it. I'm, I'm not much of a DIYer. Um, in fact, my husband is actually the one that does a lot of the making of the products. Um, so I'll share that with you in a minute. Robin, uh, hand soap and laundry soap. Yeah. So those are the first two on my list. So those were my big ones. Those were the original. They were the OGs of my DIYing time, um, or career, whatever you want to call it. Um, so yeah, why I think this is so important is, I mean, I could go on and on about the, this topic, but we as, especially as women, um, expose ourselves to many, many, um, toxic chemicals every day with our beauty products, with our cleaning products. Um, and in fact, a lot of the stats say that the air in our home is up to five times more toxic than the air we breathe outside. And this is because of a lot of the things that we bring into our house. And so I think it's so, so important that in this day and age, and especially right now in wanting to take care of ourselves in the best way possible, I think we really need to be aware of what we're bringing into our homes. We need to be aware of the ingredients. Um, and this can feel a little bit daunting when you first get started. Now, Heather and Robin, you've kind of been along this journey for a little while. Um, I don't know if it felt daunting for you guys in the beginning, but I know it did for me because when I first started realizing um, you know, certain ingredients like fragrance, and realizing, oh my God, I had no idea fragrance could hide up to 2,000 different chemicals and ingredients in just that one word. It's really tricky. And I started realizing how many things I had in my home that had fragrance, even though I thought like, I was like, well, we don't use air fresheners. I know those are bad for you and things like that. But I could not believe um, how many products we had in our home with certain ingredients in them that I was it felt overwhelming in the beginning. And so the DIY thing for me was a really great way to feel like I had a little bit of that control. I could slowly start, you know, kind of one room at a time, one product at a time. 
It was super simple. So there's something really awesome about getting back to the basics, right? So I love that it was simple. It was not time consuming. So I know if you had told me a number of years ago that I would be making my own laundry detergent or hand soap, I would never have believed that. Um, and I think a lot of people shy away from it because they think, oh my God, I do not have the time for this. But I mean, how quick is it to make that hand soap, guys? Like it takes seconds. Um, you don't have to run out to the store, which would take far longer. And especially now where we're trying to limit our amount of times that we're running out. Uh, I mean, for us, I, we have enough um, Castile soap that we could probably make hand soap for the next three years and not ever have to worry about buying it, right? Um, which is pretty awesome. So the, the simplicity of it, the um, saving time, and then the cost effectiveness is huge. So um, you really do, you, you save a lot of money doing a lot of these DIYs. Um, and that was a big thing for my husband when we first got started with the oils. Um, I know that he really liked the idea of it replacing items in our home versus just being another cost. Now don't get me wrong, my oil orders are steep because <laughs> we use all the supplements and every month there we do have quite a bit on that list. Um, but you know, when you can make a lot seven liters of a laundry detergent for, you know, something like five, six dollars, that's that's very, very cost effective. Right. Which is awesome. Um, so that was a big one for me, the cost effectiveness. And, and then, like I said, just having more control over the ingredients that I was bringing into my home. That was huge. So it was one less thing, one less company I had to research, one last company I had to worry about if they were being transparent or not. Um, and it just made a lot of sense for us. So that's why I think it's so, um, so important to, you know, start looking at some of the, the DIYs and it doesn't have to be everything. Like I said, I've DIYed, what was one, oh, um, a while back I was making our own body wash. There's a great DIY recipe for body wash for doTERRA, if you want to Google that. However, you had to make it about every four to five days because it would go off. It, it, sitting in a hot shower, there was nothing there to help it preserve. So I buy the body wash from doTERRA. So that's an example of where, do your research. I mean, there's some beautiful companies popping up. Um, I, you know, I like Beauty Counter for my makeup. Uh, I obviously use doTERRA for most of my other stuff, but there's some wonderful companies out there that we can support that are being super transparent. They're sourcing ethically. They're doing all the right things. So you don't have to DIY everything, but um, yeah, it's definitely nice to have some of those uh, recipes as an option. Okay, so let's jump in. Uh, Robin, you said you also DIY soap bars. Cool. That's actually one I haven't done. You should, if it's easy, um, I would love you to link up the recipe for us or post it at some point in our group so we can see that. I've heard soap is kind of hard to, to make, but um, I'd love to see that. Okay, so um, the other side note I wanted to quickly make was in the newsletter I sent out last week, I included or sorry, newsletter last week, wasn't last week, newsletter last month, um, I included the Supernatural recipe guide. It has every single DIY um, in it that I have personally used on top of many, 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 many others that um, Ange Peters, who is the founder of Whole Fit, um, has put together and she is a DIY queen. So this is an amazing resource um, that was made just for our team um kind of under the whole fit team which we are and so i just want to direct you to that guys um if you haven't paid attention to that dig through your inbox or your junk or your trash and pull out the march newsletter because that um supernatural recipe guide is like the holy grail for you guys um okay so let's go through these top 10 kind of quickly and if you have any questions then we can go from there um, and like I said, if you're looking for the actual recipe, you can pretty much Google any of these, um, or you can always message me and I can help you, um, guide you. Okay. Number one was the hand soap. Robin and Heather, you already mentioned this. This was the starter for me. This was the first thing um, I made. I couldn't believe how easy it was. All that's in this hand soap is Castile. You've got your water. You've got um, some sort of carrier oil, like a fractionated oil or an olive oil. We actually prefer using olive oil because we find it's a little more nourishing on your hands. And then your essential oil. So your On Guard, any citrus oil. Um, I love spearmint, um, peppermint, 
It gives it, your hands a little bit of a tingle. Um, you can play around with the oils that you add into this, um, but ideally there's some sort of oil in there that has um, a antibacterial or a cleansing. Tea tree is a great one. Um, and it's fun because you can play around with the different smells, right? And over Christmas, you can make it smell a little bit more Christmassy. In the spring, you can make it smell a little bit more floral. So for those that had the Bath and Body Works addic addiction, which I totally did, I used to love Bath and Body Works. Um, now I, I have a hard time walking by it without stopping every person going in there and saying, no, I got a better solution for you. <laughs> but um, if you like to have nice smelling things, which, hey, we all do, um, you can still have that. Let's, you know, the really nice thing about this is you're not trading health for crappy products or health for, you know, products that aren't going to make you feel good or um, aren't going to smell good. They're, they're going to be the best smelling thing you've ever, you've ever done. So uh, hand soap is the first one. This is so important. It was back, I think it was around 2016. You can Google it that the FDA banned 19 chemicals from antibacterial soap. And they also stated that there was no evidence that antibacterial soaps work better than just soap and water. Um, and that the chemicals in a lot of these antibacterial soaps are posing health hazards. Now, we have known this about many of the ingredients in these antibacterial soaps long before 2016. Unfortunately, sometimes it takes a while for these things to actually be made into um, laws or rules. Um, it, it sometimes takes the FDA a little bit longer to catch up on things. But anyways, they did ban that, which was good. Um, we are way behind though. Um, and that's the States, but we're not that much better in Canada and we're way behind Europe as far as banning chemicals, um, not just in anti antibacterial products, but also, um, a big one is beauty products. So don't get me started on that topic. But again, this is why it's important. Uh, pay attention to the ingredients in those soaps. And it's not like using a soap like that once or twice is going to be horrible for you, but it's the fact that you're repeat exposure day after day. And I don't know about you right now, but you're probably washing your hands a hundred times more than you were, um, you know, a month ago. So think about that repeated exposure, repeated exposure. You want to be aware of what's in your products. So, so, so important. Second one is laundry detergent. This was a big one for me as well. Um, and this was a big one for my husband because he loved the idea that we were saving a lot of money. Buying, trying to buy a natural laundry detergent is not cheap. A lot of them are not very effective. And it's tricky because you don't know, like you can find a laundry detergent that says natural or fragrance free, and it doesn't mean it's not hiding um, chemicals in it. I mean, there was a study a while back where a lot of the fragrance free laundry detergents still had phthalates in them, which is not good. Um, so again, for me, I just like the idea of, okay, I know exactly what's in this, um, especially for my kids, my son who's had eczema issues, having a newborn. I mean, these things um, are super, were super important to me. And I knew that the when I was doing some research, that the laundry room was one of the most toxic areas in many people's homes between the detergent that we use and say fabric softener, if you're still using that, or dryer sheets, there are so many better alternatives out there. You know, you get your dryer balls, you can make a DIY fabric softener if that's really important to you. I never really understood why people used it, but anyways. Um, so yeah, so that's your laundry. And again, your laundry detergent, your Castile soap, you're looking at salt, coarse salt, baking soda, water, and your essential oils, that's it. Super, super basic, but very effective. Uh, Castile soap, a lot of people ask me about this when they're getting started. I'm not loyal to any one brand of Castile soap, to be honest. I obviously like to get it when it doesn't have any scent in it. I, it defeats the purpose if this is scented. Um, so no scent. Um, this one's made with fair trade ingredients, organic. Um, I like that. Uh, sulfate free, paraben free, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, and I said no scent, but look at that. <laughs> This one I grabbed downstairs, that's probably why it's still so full. So you gotta watch for that. Again, not the end of the world, it's probably better than anything else, but I much prefer the ones that are unscented. Um, you can get this on you know, Amazon Prime, well.ca, they pop up at Costco every once in a while, they're in most health food stores. I know now it's a little chat more challenging to order things online and get things, but just keep an eye out and when they pop up, just order a bunch so you have them on stock. 
So that's important. Uh, that's an important ingredient because you'll notice that's in a lot of things that I mentioned and it's already in the first two. Okay. Hand soap, laundry soap. Number three, I wrote down room spray. Um, and this can kind of encompass a lot of different things, but again, it goes back to that idea of not bringing a toxic or synthetic fragrance into your home. You guys have heard me talk about this. It's so important. If there's one thing you're going to do in trying to clean up your home is pay attention to fragrance and get rid of it. Um, so air fresheners, um, you know, any, any sprays that you buy in the store where you're not paying attention to what ingredients, um, anything with fragrance in it. And I know people want to have, um, a nice smelling home. So do I, I live with a bunch of boys and I, there's some stinky things that go on in this house. Um, so I definitely like to have a nice smelling home. I mean, diffusing is one of the best ways to make your home smell nice and it's super simple. So that's, I mean, that's not a DIY, but just a side note, you grab your diffuser, you put any oil in it you want and your house can smell lovely. Um, but if you like a room spray or for us, I like to have it in the bathroom. So it's a bathroom spray. doTERRA actually sells these super cool, um, misting spray bottles. They're perfect for room sprays, linen sprays, bathroom sprays, whatever kind of spray you want. And it's really, really simple. All it is, is your oils, your water. And then I like to add a little bit of witch hazel because it kind of naturally preserves, um, the water in here. If it's sitting for a longer period of time, you don't have to have that though. So you can just do the water and the oils and then you can mix up any combination you want. I wrote down, I think I wrote down a couple combinations that I like. I love using doTERRA blends. So I love using holiday peace is one of my favorites. It's in the bathroom right now. Um, I love using the citrus. So lemon, grapefruit, lime, that combination is really nice. Siberian fir and wild orange, really nice for the bathroom. I like any of the fir oils for the bathroom. Um, I just, it's the piney kind of smell, I guess I, I really, really like. But you can play around with any combination of smell that you want. Um, and great, great way um, to make any area of your room or any area of your home smell nice. Linen spray can be really nice with lavender. Um, if you miss the smell of that, you know, fragrant smell in your laundry, you can make a laundry spray or a linen spray um, with lavender. Um, what else have I used? Oh, like a monster spray for your kids. You can mix up a couple oils that are really good, like juniper berries, really good for nightmares. You know, your lavender, your serenity, any of the calming oils, and this could be a little spray that they can do at night to spray the monsters away. There's lots of ways that you can use that DIY. Hey, Cindy. How are ya? Um, okay. So that's the room spray. Uh, number four is just a straight up all purpose cleaner. So cleaning products, DIY in your cleaning products is where it's at in my opinion, because to buy clean, uh, very clean, transparent companies, it, it's expensive, it can add up. Um, and if you're like me and our house is constantly a mess, I'm constantly trying to clean it up. I didn't bring my DIY, but I've shown this to, for, uh, to you guys before that I just use a glass spray bottle and um, the On Guard Concentrate. This is on sale this month, you guys. It's 10% off, so it's a great time to stock up on a few. Super, it's super inexpensive. $17, make up of about 12 to 13 all-purpose cleaners. I mean, that's like a dollar, I think I did the math, it's like a dollar 40 or something per all-purpose cleaner, and super simple. You can also make, if you don't have the On Guard Concentrate, you can make an all-purpose cleaner. You're just gonna do the water oils, and then you're going to add vinegar. I just don't love the smell of vinegar. I find it takes over things. Um, I do use a glass cleaner that is just water, vinegar, and lemon oil. So tons of different uh, cleaning products that you can use. So, but I just wanted to mention that that's, in my opinion, the simplest one. Um, there's another cleaning product that I really like that I wanted to mention, and that was my scrub tile scrub cleaner. It is, let me just look at the recipe, baking soda, water, and uh, lemon, lime, and I believe vinegar. I can post the recipe a little bit, a bit, a splash of vinegar. It makes like this paste, and you can use scrub. I scrub our sinks, um, our bathtub, any sort of grout or tile where you need to get in and scrub a little bit more. It works so, so well. I actually just cleaned the boys' bathroom sadly for the first time in a little while. Like I do spot cleaning, but I really got in there and scrubbed. 
like, Jeff, come look at how white the sink is. I never knew the sink was so white. Um, so this is an awesome, awesome recipe. You can Google it. I think it's just called um, tile scrub cleaner or something like that. But again, I can, I can post that if you guys are interested. So that's my other favorite uh, cleaning DIY. And then I just use the all-purpose cleaner for basically everything else. Um, there's also a really good recipe for toilet bowl, bowl pucks that I like. You throw it in, you let it fizz up, and then you scrub the toilet. So um, again, you can Google that pretty easily. It's a doTERRA DIY. Okay, uh, any questions so far, guys? We're on number six, taking a little bit of a turn to uh, dry shampoo. And I say that now as my hair is looking a little messy and greasy. I haven't washed it for a while, but I love dry shampoo and it's so easy to make. I bought these little containers at the dollar store. Again, I know it's a little harder to run out for things right now and supplies, but just FYI, you can buy these little shakers at the dollar store um, or you can get creative with something else. And um, in here is simply uh, arrowroot powder. And for me, I use cocoa powder as well because I have dark hair. Now, if you're blonde, you're just going to use the arrowroot powder and then you're going to add your essential oils. Um, I love the combination of rosemary, peppermint, and lavender. It almost smells like, and I usually do two, two, and two. Rosemary, peppermint, lavender. It smells like, oh, what's the name of that brand that I used to really like using? Um, not Aveeno, Aveda products I couldn't remember you can also add some bentonite clay in this um, that's what uh, Ann Peters recommends and I have not done that I just do um, half and half of cocoa powder and arrowroot powder and it works amazing so if you're trying to shampoo your hair less I mean we have no place to go right now so who cares if you, what your hair looks like or at least that's my theory but um, I used to use this all the time when I wouldn't have time to wash my hair in the morning or if I was running out to a meeting for work or anything like that and I get compliments on my hair a lot um, so don't judge me now but uh, this is a really awesome DIY so dry shampoo that's one of my hands down go to I highly recommend it if you're somebody that has to wash your hair often sometimes it takes a little training to get your hair used to not washing it often but it's amazing uh, okay what else do we have here da, 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 da. oh number seven this is kind of a DIY it's kind of not it's super simple and I I post about this all the time is my detox bath so this is awesome right now, especially if you feel like your your body's a little run down. Um, you know, right now, just keeping your body detoxified is, is amazing. Our bodies are super, super great at detoxifying themselves through our different pathways and systems and liver. But again, when you're exposed to toxic thing after toxic thing, there's a buildup. And so to do this detox bath, you know, once a month or once every couple of weeks, it's awesome. Personally, I probably do it about once a week. And all it is is baking soda, Epsom salts. There's no exact me measurement. You just take a handful of your baking soda, your Epsom salts, and then you add some detoxifying oils. My favorite are juniper berry, uh, rosemary, frankincense. Uh, but I get creative. Um, I also, Slim and Sassy is a nice one. If you want to really amp up your detox bath, just do a dry skin brush beforehand. Um, oh, my little ones. I might have to go soon. But um, so that's a detox bath. Number eight is a DIY hand sanitizer. I posted about this. This one's super important right now because it's hard to get your hands on sanitizer. Big thing here is the CDC is recommending it that 60% of the solution be uh, alcohol. So this is rubbing alcohol, fractionated coconut oil, and then your On Guard. Again, very easy. Let me know if you need the recipe. Um, fractionated coconut oil is just the liquid version. Um, I like the doTERRA brand. I'm, I'm not necessarily loyal. I like an organic. So when I see them pop on sale, I buy them. Um, so that's the hand sanitizer. I don't know if anybody's tried making that yet, but we've been making that and I've actually been handing them out to friends and family as well from a socially distanced, um, Okay, what else do I want to do? Sorry, I'm distracted now because Noelle's crying. Um, number nine is, oh, the one that I use a lot too is a makeup brush soak. So I use very simple 
one teaspoon of on guard concentrate. Then I like uh, geranium because it's this really nice floral smell. Add warm water and pop your makeup brushes in and give them a good wash. That's an awesome, again, they're really, really simple, um, but it's one I tend to use a fair bit. So I wanted to share that one with you. That was number nine. And then number 10 that we tend to use the most in this house um, when we're feeling run down is this thing called a sinus balm. Comment below if you've tried this because this is super, super intense. Um, it is basically just you take a mug, you place uh, a drop of lemon, peppermint, oregano, and tea tree. So lemon, peppermint, oregano, tea tree. You fill the mug up with hot water. You're not going to drink it. You're going to kind of place the towel over your head and you're going to inhale and breathe it in for as long as you can. Be very cautious the first time you do this because it is super intense, but it works so well. You're immediately going to get sinus relief. I find that if I feel like I'm coming down with something sinus related, I will almost do this proactively. Um, and I haven't had a sinus infection in years um, and I used to get them. So I love, 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 love that. So I had to mention that as my number 10. So that's, again, you can Google it. I think they call it doTERRA sinus balm or something, but it's so effective. Um, and yeah, that was my top 10. The 11th one that I wanted to squeeze in there was my after sun spray because I use that a lot too in the summer um, or when we're traveling with the boys. And that's really simple too. That's aloe vera juice, um, fractionated coconut oil, vitamin E, and then lavender, frankincense, peppermint, and geranium. All amazing oils for your skin. Um, and that's in about a 60 ml spray bottle. So that's a really good one too that again, you can find the recipe or what I'll do is over the next week or so, I'll try posting a couple of these, uh, maybe ones that I haven't posted in a while or comment here and just let me know what recipes you want to see, the ingredients and the measurements, and I'll post those for you guys. Um, anyways, those are the top 10, the hand soap, the laundry, the room spray, cleaning, all-purpose cleaner, the scrub cleaner, the dry shampoo, the detox bath, the hand sanitizer, the makeup brush soak, sinus balm, and then the after sun spray was kind of a close, close number 11. Um, so let me know if you guys have any questions. Those are some of my favorites. Like I said, it was hard because there's a lot of DIYs I've done over the years, but those tend to be the ones I go to most regularly. Um, and yeah, I think next week I am going to hop on <laughs> Spike. I think Jeff's trying to put her down. I hear her crying. So I'm going to jump off in a minute. Um, so yeah, next week I am thinking of either doing a class on skincare, glowing skin, or women's health in relation to menstrual health and um, and just finding that natural kind of flow within your 30 day cycle, which is something I'm really passionate about. So comment which one you're more interested in or let me know. Um, I'll post, but again, we'll resume for Sunday around 11 o'clock. Give me your feedback. If that time's not great for anybody, then, you know, I'll try my best to switch it up. Um, and yeah, hope you're having an awesome day. Hope you found that a little bit helpful. And as always post, if you have any questions. Okay, guys. I will chat with you all soon. Take care.